Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Gareth, and in this video, we're going to be talking all about a project that I really want to make and that you guys are probably going to really enjoy. I have a plan on the screen here. First of all, we're going to do a little introduction of who I am, then we're going to be talking about my studio, then we're going to be talking about my elevator pitch, then we're going to be talking a whole bunch about what the game is and how it works, then we're going to be talking about the different versions the game is going to have, and then we're going to wrap this bad boy up with what I need and how you guys can get in on the development super early. So first up, who even am I? Well, hi, my name is Gareth, and I'm the founder and owner of my kick-ass company, Simple Studios. It's a game studio by students, for students, but we'll save all the studio stuff for the actual studio section, and let's get back to moi. So, I have been designing games for over 16 years at this point, and have been developing tabletop games for a little over 12 years, so I have a whole bunch of experience. Uh, I'm the heart and soul of my company, and I make sure that I energize absolutely everybody around me, and... I'm, I'm a very creative individual, and that's why I'm making this game, because uh, I want to basically break break what people think tabletop RPGs are and give them something they've never seen before and that a whole bunch of other people can enjoy. Next up, the studio. If you guys didn't know already, my company is called Simple Studios. It's a game studio that makes small games anyone can work on, and I partner with high schools and colleges across Ontario to give students the experience they need. And uh, the whole reason why I started this studio is because when I was a student and just starting off in the industry, I never had anyone to turn to. All I could do was kind of send out some resumes and CVs and hope I even get a response, let alone uh, an actual interview and, by extension, a job. And so I made Simple Studios as a way for everybody, regardless of prior experience, regardless of who they know or don't know, regardless of the CV or resume they have, I want to make Simple Studios everyone's first step. Because I, because again, when I was in their shoes, I really wished someone had taken a chance on me so I could actually get started. Uh, and so I want to give people that chance and make sure that everybody, again, regardless of what their background is or prior experience, can have that first step and really get their you know really get into the industry get their foot in the door and get their names out there uh, and now we're going to be talking about the elevator pitch for the main topic of today's video and that is tiny dungeon it's a bite-sized tabletop rpg that can fit any schedule and makes your adventuring a guarantee uh that's pretty much it. It's a tabletop RPG that is very condensed and is designed to be played within 30 to 60 minutes in one session instead of having uh, multi-hour sessions across an entire month or even two months. Um, that's pretty much it. If you've played Dungeons & Dragons before, you know quite a lot about this game already, but if you haven't, don't worry because that's what we're going to talk about next. How does the game actually work? Uh, and I have some examples here. So let's say we are in a town, all three of us, you, you, and me, all right? We're all in a town, and our goal is to get out of this town. We're not told how to get out of the town, but we have to look at what's around us and basically use what we're good at to figure out a solution. So let's say that, uh, you know, we're stuck in this town, and to the left of us is a mine that's blocked by a boulder. Uh, in front of us, there's a guard, a really tough guard, that's in front of some gates. And then to the right of us, there's a door we can lockpick. Maybe one of our characters wants to go lockpick the door. We can do that. Maybe we can go lift the rock outside of the mine. Maybe that's something we can do. Maybe we want to convince the uh, oops. Maybe we want to convince the guard with our superior intellect. It doesn't really matter how we uh, achieve the goal as long as we progress in the story. And as someone who's running the game, essentially what this does is uh, sorry. Essentially what happens is when the party enters a new area, you're going to be given a description of the area and will be told basically everything the players can do, and it's up to you to make sure that the players can actually move along in the story and are smart enough to figure out what the next steps are, and if they aren't, you know, give them a little nudge. Uh, but then once you do progress enough in the story, you will encounter combat, or sorry, you will encounter enemies. And so uh, the way this works is when you actually get into a fight, the entire battlefield is broken up into teeny tiny tiles, and each tile is, is uh, equal to five feet. And uh, if you have an ability or an attack that has a 10-foot range, for example, this means that we can target the two green tiles beside, above, or below us to actually try and hit something. And then once we actually do find something to hit, here's how this works, too. There's a couple moving parts here, but uh, the long and short is dodge is used for physical attacks and evasion is used for spells. So if I wanted to hit this guy with my sword, I would have to roll a 10 or higher in order to hit him with my sword. Or maybe I want to cast fireball on him. If I try to use a spell on him, I need to roll an 8 or higher in order to actually hit him. 
Uh, and that's how that works. And uh, we'll, you know, we're kind of off track a little bit, but we're going to head over to the character creation. And one of the main ways that this game really differentiates itself from any other tabletop RPG out there is with how easy it is to actually start. If you've played Dungeons and Dragons, you know exactly what it's like to actually try and start the game. All the reading that has to go into the character creation, all the theory crafting you have to do before the game starts, all this stuff that just adds time onto the actual game and doesn't let you get into the action until you're probably four hours in. In this game, eventually what's going to be able to happen is you hit the random button and you get random stats, attributes, proficiency, sorry, proficiency bonuses, items, buffs, spells, and everything you need for a kick-ass character. So right here we have an example. Uh, these aren't random, but, you know, we're, we're going to pretend that they are random. You know, we have our random stats here. We have our random attributes. I forgot to put the proficiency bonuses in, but, you know, imagine them right here or something. We have our random items. We have our random buffs, and we have our random spells. But, you know, obviously we're going to be new players, and you don't know what any of this stuff means. Well, guess what? In the digital version, you can click on something. So let's say this shield here. Boom, we can click on it. A pop-up happens, and it tells us about the item. That's pretty much it. But hey, what about this? What if I don't know what the symbol means? Well, guess what? I can click on that too, and boom. It, there, there's a description. That's pretty much it for the character creation. Uh, the long and short is I wanted to make something that lets you get into the game as fast as possible, because I know when I was playing Dungeons & Dragons and uh, other tabletop games when I was starting out, one of the biggest barriers to entry and one of the biggest turnoffs for me was the character creations. Sure, making the paladins is fun, but I really want to get into the game as fast as possible with everyone and start killing monsters. And so that's what this game is for. And uh, we just have another little example here. Nothing too crazy. There are going to be cursed items uh, and legendary passives and relics and things like that. But uh, that'll be for a different video. And if you guys are curious, you guys can reach out to me uh, on LinkedIn at Gareth under sorry at Gareth Horn, or you can email me at Gareth underscore Horn at Outlook dot com. I'll leave my email somewhere. Um, but yeah, for now, let's continue talking about the game, and one of the main things about this game is its replayability. So while the campaigns are extremely short compared to other tabletop games, because they're designed to be played within 30 to 60 minutes, the amount of times you can play each campaign is actually pretty surprising when you take into consideration how short they are. Each campaign will have multiple endings. Each campaign has one single goal, but as we discussed before, you're not told how to do that goal. So let's say, for example, we have a kingdom here, and there's a dragon that's attacking the kingdom every single day and the king says to you and the party get rid of this dragon I don't care how it's done just get rid of it uh, and so as the players it's our job to figure out how we're going to get rid of the dragon and basically how we're going to do each step so let's say maybe we want to feed the dragon well guess what we got to go to the blacksmith then we got to go to the sage then the falconer then we're going to shoot dragon food out of a cannon into the dragon cave and it's going to be happy Maybe that's what we do. Maybe we want to kill the dragon instead, so we head up to the forest, we head up to the rogue knight, we get permission from the king, we go down to the bounty hunter, and then we go slaughter the dragon with our new party members. It's all about how uh, how you want to play the game and what you can and can't do. So, uh, again, let's use these random characters as an example. If I have really high intelligence, I probably don't want to fight the dragon head-on because if I get hit by the dragon, I'm probably going to die. So, it's probably in my best interest to actually feed the dragon... Um, but again, I'm kind of rambling here, but you get the idea, right? There are multiple endings throughout the campaign. Each, a, sorry, each way that you achieve the ending is perfectly fine, and there's going to be a whole lot of secrets and stuff hidden throughout these campaigns that you can only really find unless you've played uh, through the campaign before, because there's going to be little hints that you're going to pick up on as you play each campaign multiple times. Uh, next up, we're going to be talking about the versions that the game will have. So currently there's three. There's the digital, the half digital, and the physical version. The digital version is probably going to be the first one. It's basically what it sounds like. It's just everything's digital. So all of the, whoops, all the player stuff is going to be digital. All the dice is going to be digital. All the enemies is digital. All the game runner stuff is digital, right? Like the, the layout of the maps, where they're supposed to go next, and all that good stuff. That's all going to be on the computers or on your phones, whatever. The half digital version is more or less the same. It still has a lot of the character uh, creation stuff and the game runner stuff on screen, but you would use actual dice and move figures around on a table. Uh, and then finally, the physical version. This one is not going to be the first version because that's very capital intensive and that's a lot of money I don't have. But essentially what will happen is we basically just sell these campaigns to a bunch of different stores and say, hey, 
try this out. Um, and there, there is a little bit more with the physical version that we can do that we can't do with the digital or half digital version, but that's a very businessy thing. So if you are curious, reach out to me at Gareth Horn on LinkedIn or shoot me an email at Gareth underscore Horn at Outlook.com and I will answer your questions and happily dive into more detail. But for now, let's wrap up this video with what I need and how you guys can get in on the development early. So while I have been designing tabletop games for a little over 12 years now, I haven't been designing stories for 12 years. <laughs> I can write the mechanics, I can write the systems, I could do all that stuff in my sleep any day of the week. But when it comes to stories, I'm really screwed. I don't know what the hell to do for that. So if you are someone who is a creative writer or someone who likes tabletop games and likes writing stories, well, guess what? You're going to want to get in on this because I need people who, to, who can write stories and I would also like people who like to play tabletop games. So even if you're not a story writer, but you do want to play test some of the beta campaigns I created, then happily shoot me a message and I will try to get back to you within 48 hours. Um, and if I don't, then I'll owe you a pop or something. But uh, until then... Again, reach out to me if you're curious at Gareth Horn at, uh, on LinkedIn or shoot me an email at Gareth underscore Horn at Outlook.com. And uh, yeah, let's uh, let's get it going. Let's really break the mold of the tabletop RPG industry and really uh, get this product out there. See you then.